Before we get started on this week's episode, I'd like to thank the folks over at RadioStPete.com for their edition of Hustleberg to the lineup on Thursdays at 8 a.m. and noon, as well as their podcast archive. It was up in the air about whether last week's interview with Fuse Therapy's Amanda Grozenich would be their first, or if it would be this week's Q&A episode. Thank you for the opportunity to share with your listeners how we do business in the Berg. And for our new listeners on RadioStPete.com, thanks so much for embracing us so quickly. We saw a nice bump on last week's episode as a result of your downloads and subscribing to the podcast. If you'd like to catch up on earlier episodes, visit Hustleberg.com or subscribe on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite platform. On to the show! I will be defined by your dreams, committed to my goals, yeah. Gotta do my own thing, keep up the hustling. Hustleberg. This podcast is all about small business in St. Petersburg, Florida, how the business owners got started, how they built their business, and how they serve our community. I'm Brett Bittner, and I'm the host of Hustleberg, and I started Beyond Your Side Hustle, a marketing firm where we help budding entrepreneurs go beyond their side hustles and ditch their nine-to-fives. As the founder of a small business here in St. Pete myself, I love meeting and talking with fellow small business owners. Lucky for you, I also like to record those conversations for you to listen to. If you find anything of value in this episode, I encourage you to subscribe to the podcast because there are probably more nuggets in other episodes, both past and upcoming. It would also be great if you rate and review the episode to let us know what you got out of the conversation. If you have a question about marketing, building your brand, or operating your small business that you'd like to have answered on a Q&A episode, please visit beyondyoursidehustle.com slash podcast question to submit it. Welcome to episode number 10 of the Hustleberg podcast, and I want to thank you guys for uh, joining us. This is a Q&A episode, uh, so we've got a couple questions here, and we'll go ahead and jump right in. Uh, besides social media and appearing on a podcast like Hustleberg, what are other ways to market a company such as mine that doesn't have a physical location since it's a community-based company? So without a physical location, you're going to rely on your network, the relationships you make, and the reach and positive things of their word of mouth. Uh, one of the reasons that social media gives you uh, a one-up here and is such an amazing platform for you is that you have a megaphone that sticks around forever in the digital space to offer something of value to your potential customers and your community. Uh, if you're dead set on removing that amazing avenue for your network, reach, and word of mouth, I would be doing absolutely everything I could in the networking world. I would be meeting with and adding value to one person or group of people at a time. I would find professionals and groups that are in your field or one similar to it. I would be going to conventions and uh, conferences where you're going to be able to collect business cards so that you can re reach out to them later. Uh, this is going to take time. It's going to take a lot longer to create this network for you than you can on social media because many of these conversations that you have will be one-on-one -on -one, while your public social media conversations are going to be out there for all to see and receive the value that you add. Um, but the most valuable thing you can do in the networking world is to connect people. Uh, the relationships you create for others are going to be what helps them remember the value that you've added to their world. When you connect someone looking for an accountant with an accountant, that accountant is going to remember you in the field that you're in when they are able to repay that favor. And generally, because you have acted in a way where you are going to be connecting people, you're going to be going out of your way to share the connections that you have, to connect people, to add value to both parties. They're both going to remember that you did that without expectation of anything. And they're not only going to return the favor, they're going to to do that multiple times over because they saw that you went out of your way to help them without having anything to gain necessarily. And so that connection is probably one of the most valuable things that you can do in the networking world. In addition to social media, um, 
I would say that you, you're going to want to put out content uh, online. Um, you're going to want to put out content in any way, actually in any medium that you can that adds value to others without having anything that you expect in return. This means uh, putting out a free ebook, putting out a free guide to something, putting something out there that helps people understand better the field that you're in and not expecting anything in return, only that you are adding value to them so that they will later remember all of the value that you've added to their world and to their life that they are going to be looking to do to do that for you as well. Uh, so I would definitely be networking like crazy if I'm not going to be utilizing social media. And I would be thinking about how I can put out content like crazy uh, outside the social media space uh, that I can give out physically, that I can give out digitally, uh, just that I can put out there that is going to show, one, the expertise that I have in the areas that are important to me, that are important to my business, and that are going to be helping uh, people who are looking to find someone in that area. If you are somebody who is uh, operating a landscaping business, you're going to be wanting to put things out there where you talk about things that uh, they're, they're going to want to know about the, the best way to uh, cut the grass. You know, make sure that you're not cutting uh, too short when, it's, when the grass is long, that you gradually bring it down um, because otherwise you'll scalp the yard or uh, making sure that you're giving tips about watering and maintaining a healthy uh, lawn. You've got a lot of opportunities there to reach out and share the knowledge that you have in a way that establishes you as an expert in the field that you're in. It establishes you as an expert in some of the things that are related to what you do. And then you're going to be able to bring people into your fold, um, people that are into what you do, um, that are going to become part of your community and then you're able to be the person that they come to or, or the company that they come to when they have an issue in that area. So if I didn't have social media, that is exactly what I'd be doing. I'd be working on uh, free eBooks that I would be distributing. I would be networking like crazy uh, and I would be putting out all kinds of content um, that isn't necessarily on social media, although uh, those are all things that you can be doing if you think of yourself uh, first as a publishing company around what you do, uh, and you can utilize social media as a part of that, and you can drive people to you because of all the value that you have added to their world. Our next question comes from Natalie Landrum. She was able to do so online at beyondyoursidehustle.com slash podcast question. And her question is, what is your favorite way of getting yourself and your business out there for the world to see? Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that social media and the content that I create are my favorite methods of sharing what it is that I do. Uh, because being a content producer, whether we're talking about on social activities like this podcast or being a guest on relevant podcasts or when I offer my expertise to others in a way that improves their job, hobby, recreation or life in general, uh, I get to impact people's lives that I may never encounter. Uh, I also get to impact people's lives that I do get to encounter, and in turn, all of the value that is added to their lives, I feel, will come back to me. It's one of those feelings uh, of a, a business karma or relationship karma, uh, and you may have guessed that I am a very, very optimistic person, and I like to see the success of others. Um, I like to see the people that I know do well. I like to see people that I don't know do well. And I like to know internally um, that I may have helped their success even in the slightest bit. Uh, personally, that makes me feel really good. And that gets even better when I know that the success that I aided in or may have aided in causes them to remember and want to return the favor. Uh, overall, when it, you take a look at the relationships in my life, my goal is to have a positive account balance with as many people as possible. And I'm looking at this in a deposits withdrawals kind of way um, because I'm making deposits throughout the life of the relationships that I've created with others. Um, those deposits are going to be there. They're going to help me to recover from the withdrawals that I will inevitably make in those same relationships because we all screw up now and then. 
And that may be, that deposit, uh, a one particular deposit may be something that allows them to offer me the grace when I do screw up. Um, and, you know, that's that's a fantastic position to be in. And those deposits are also going to be there uh, should I ever need to ask for help from them uh, because we all need to ask for help from time to time. Uh, so when it comes to my favorite way of getting uh, myself and my business out there for the world to see Natalie, uh, I would say that it is adding value to the world in any way that you can uh, when you are looking at the value that you create and the value that you're able to add for others. Um, having that mindset, making those deposits continually uh, is going to be what brings people to you in the business world. Those relationships uh, as people are looking to reward those that have helped them along the way. Um, so that's kind of the way that I look at it. And that's the way that I like to present myself and the things that I do to the world. The next question that we have is what platform should I be using to promote my business online? Now, this is a little bit similar to something that I answered in episode four of the podcast, which is another Q&A episode uh, when I discuss the single most important platform for your business's social media efforts. Um, uh, in that episode, I stated that in 2020, the single most important platform is Facebook due to its uh, popularity very broad user base, and the expectation that most have of being able to find you on Facebook, even if you don't have a website. And in that episode, I also touched on some things to consider when it comes to the other platforms you use, which I'm going to expand upon here. Uh, first, we need to make sure that we realize that current popularity does not mean forever popularity, as I noted in that episode, and that platforms come and go with the whims of the internet population and what the youngest users deem to be cool. Uh, on that note for a moment, I want to add that every social media platform in the history of the internet ages up. Um, take a look at Facebook, for example. It was created over 15 years ago for college kids. Uh, two and a half years later, it went beyond the .edu email address to anybody with an email address. And in 2020, its fastest growing demographic is senior citizens. That is an evolution that they have continued to embrace and make sure that they are utilizing as people come to their platform. It's not just for college kids in 2004. Uh, they have grown and adapted what Facebook is used for. And so when you take a look at current popularity, it's not always going to be the same population that's there. After you factor in current popularity, you need to look at how you can tell your story in a compelling way to the people who want to see or hear or read it. Uh, so if we're in a situation where we're talking about uh, competing platforms. Let's say uh, you have something that's visually interesting that you want to put out in video form. Uh, you should probably side with the market leader as the platform for doing so. Uh, so if you're putting out longer form video content, you should put it on YouTube rather than Vimeo. Unless, unless your focus is clarity, precision, or intricate filmmaking, or you need to keep your content a little bit closer to the vest, not as widely searchable and viewable as YouTube. Um, when you're doing something that's visually interesting, and I can tell you that no matter what we do, we all have that to some extent in what we do and what we know, we need to be using a visual medium. Um, if you can use video well to tell your story, do it. If you can use photographs to tell your story, do it. If there's an audio aspect of what you do, create something that includes that aspect as well. And then you should make sure that you are uh, creating content that has multiple ways to be used on multiple platforms. This is something that I brought up in episode number eight, just two episodes ago, um, where I talked about utilizing transcripts of a podcast to become a blog post while your podcast is also out there for people to see. And if you create a video component of that podcast, even if it's just something that your podcast host creates for you, like I do with Podbean, um, where I'm able to put those episodes on YouTube for people who aren't necessarily subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or something like that, but they want to learn 
in a passive audio way by having a tab open on their browser while they're working on something else. So you have an opportunity to take all of these different platforms, create a single piece of content that can be used in multiple ways. And you, you're going to want to make sure that you are finding where your potential customers are so that you can tell your story and create a community within that medium around what it is that you do. This is all about telling your story and how you will best tell that story. Um, and you need to make sure that for any platform that you're using, that you're comfortable using it. And as I said in episode four, that does not mean that you can exclude a platform because you're not comfortable. Uh, the reason that you're not comfortable is just that you're not comfortable with it yet and you need to learn how to use it. And you can do that by being a lurker and observing what successful users of that platform do and interact with them, interact with your potential customers before you even put out a piece of content uh, that showcases what it is that you do and tells your story. Hey, you did it. You've just listened to Hustleberg. To thank you for listening, we have a free guide to help you get started marketing your business online, aptly named our Getting Started Guide, available at beyondyoursidehustle.com slash get the guide. See how to begin with the first three things you should be doing for your business. Speaking of businesses, if you're a small business owner in St. Pete and you'd like to be a guest on an episode of the podcast, please let us know at beyondyoursidehustle.com slash podcast guest. If you got something of value from this episode, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast app. This is something small that you can do to help us shine the spotlight on all the great businesses St. Pete has to offer. The music in this episode is Defining Your Dreams by my friend Rhymer Educator. You can listen to his latest single, The Last One, on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you listen to great music. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to sharing with you how we do business in the Berg.